Now, the last few weeks have seen some pretty bitter rows between different parts of the UK as local coronavirus restrictions have been imposed. The most notable, of course, was the very public argument between Boris Johnson and Greater Manchester's Mayor Andy Burnham. Well, to reflect on a turbulent few weeks for the united or maybe disunited kingdom, we're joined by the former Northern Powerhouse Minister, Jake Berry. Thank you very much for uh, being with us. I mean, it's not new, is it, to be talking about the north-south divide, but at the minute, it feels a bit more pronounced, doesn't it? Well, absolutely. This coronavirus has put the north-south divide in sort of real focus, hasn't it, where we see large areas of the north having been locked down since the end or since the beginning of August. And that's why we formed this new group in Parliament, to make sure that we can drive forward the economy and the ambitions of people who live in the north of England. Boris Johnson, of course, fought the last election, saying that he wanted to level up uh, the country. Um, but do you feel that some of the political decisions over... COVID have been taken really with London in mind rather than the northern cities and north of England, when to impose restrictions, when to lift restrictions and when to give financial support? Well, I think initially they were. I think that's changed with the three-tiered system based on local data. I absolutely support that and want to see the government doing more and working more with local areas. But what I want to really focus on isn't just how we tackle this virus. But is what we do next. Because, of course, large areas of the north, in fact, now most of the north, I think, are in tier three. I want to see a clear route out of tier three, a northern COVID recovery plan. And lots of the infrastructure projects that we committed to at the last general election need to be reprofiled into the first part of this parliament to ensure that the northern economy can recover uh, for after this terrible disease. You say you want to see a clear route out of tier three. Uh, at the same time, that we know what the route out of Tier 3 is, don't we? It's when the data on COVID starts going in the right direction rather than the wrong direction. And at the minute, if you're looking at cases, if you're looking at testing positivity, if you're looking at hospitalisations, all the data is going in the wrong direction, isn't it? What I want to do is for the government to level with people, to provide the data in an understandable way, to set targets for the public and for businesses as well, to move out of tier three. If you visit any scout hut or church hall around the country, you'll see the, the thermometer on the wall saying we're a couple of hundred quid away from our roof replacement fund or whatever it may be. We need to treat people the same about coronavirus. If we expect everyone to play their part, make them part of the conversation, target us, help us get out of these terribly tight restrictions that I say for many areas of the North we've been in since August. You uh, wrote this week that the government's communications and leadership has been sorely missing in these high-stakes negotiations. W what do you make of the way the government handled uh, those negotiations with Andy Burnham in particular? Well, first of all, I think the government uh, doesn't have anyone uh, who has a strong relationship with the Northern mayors in the way that we did when I was Northern Powerhouse Minister or Simon Clark was the local growth minister. So I think they started at a disadvantage. Secondly, uh, as we later found out, the approach around money was formulaic. It was a set amount of cash that these areas were getting. So frankly, to have a week's worth of debate about what money areas were getting was a bit of a waste of time because we should really have been focusing on what we can do to clamp down on this disease. And I just hope that going forward, we've learned that we need to treat our northern leaders and northern mayors as a partnership of equals and uh, just really concentrate on bringing them with us in our battle against COVID. And do you think the government really understands some of the problems facing the north, some of the challenges facing the north? Well, I think they do. And you could see from the compelling argument the Prime Minister made in the 2019 Conservative Party manifesto that he really got under the skin of these northern towns. He was able to find and focus on what really mattered to them. This group we formed of 80 northern Conservative MPs, we will be drawing our numbers from that, more Conservative MPs than I think we've ever had before in the north, is going to work with government to deliver that compelling view, because many of these communities who voted Conservative for the first time ever in their electoral history electing a Conservative MP want to show that things have really changed where they live and we can't let COVID knock us off the course of delivering the Northern Powerhouse and levelling up our nation.
And just finally, um, we've been talking a lot on the programme about free school meals, whether they should be provided uh, over the holidays uh, as well as in term time. Um, Bernard Jenkins said that the government's misjudged or misunderstood the mood of the country on that. Um, what's your take? Well, my take is that there's a differing approach being set out by the Conservative and Labour Party. One believes that the right way of dealing with it is to provide vouchers during the holidays. The Conservative Party, actually in agreement with your previous guest, has said, well, we should increase universal credit, child tax credit, and also give over £60 million to local authorities, who, of course, are providing meals to pupils in the term time, to really focus down on tackling that. I actually think that the debate has been very unhelpful to have people shouting scum at each other in the House of Commons. It doesn't move this forward. This is a systemic issue. And where we will ultimately get to is a blend of both of those positions. So to take either one of those as a point of view does not mean that you want children to go hungry. That is a complete lie that is being put out there by opponents of the government's position. It actually means that there's a differential approach and ultimately where we will end up, I guess just before the Christmas holidays later this year, will be a mix of the two. But no one wants to see any child go hungry in this country. And that is what all parties, I think, are trying to achieve.